very great, very important day, second day of June 2012. It's necessary to follow up on the uh, previous video, the Ego Trippers and Catastrophe, because that's a very crucial video. It gets right to the heart of the situation. And this morning I woke up and was able to really uh, see the entire situation very clear. It's like 1 plus 1 equals 2. Almost that simple. A little more to it than that. But let's simply review because it's crucial. I've said that uh, movie makers, when they want to create a catastrophe movie for all the fans who want to go see that, they spend an enormous amount of time and energy and money to build sets. Okay? These sets that they build are entirely for the purpose of the movie, to produce the movie. They're not an end in themselves at all. Just like this, existence is not an end in itself at all. It's just a set. It's like a set on, uh, for a disaster movie. That's literally what's taking place here. And the set makers have come into this world and built it up. Rigged it all, built it up, very sophisticated, just like a movie set where they will build a replica of a city in, in model scale, model scale. A lot of movies are done to, uh, with models, small scale. And then the, in the movie, they will blow it all up, destroy it, create the havoc, and film it, and then show it to people, and people love to watch that. Same thing with this world. It's been built up like a movie set. Seven billion people, massive infrastructure, all this stuff here. Now I say the purpose is the very same as a catastrophe movie. The purpose is to provide an enormous amount of destructivity. And the purpose of that is to provide a, a very e extreme forgetfulness of what we really are. And the purpose is that, of that is to block out mem any memory of what we are so that then we can fill in that so-called void with our imaginings and fantasies that we're prime creator. And that's called ego tripping ego tripping so to recapitulate and, and, and give the, the overall outline of what's taking place here it's very crucial because the catastrophes are coming on this planet by design it's going to happen and what I say is don't try to stop it sidestep it that's the entire point of these videos is sidestep it but you have to have spiritual clarity to do that you have to not want to forget what you are. Otherwise, you will stay here. If you want to forget what you are, this world it will be a very great place for that. If you want to deepen the forgetfulness, if you want to blot out uh, as much memory of what you are as possible, much, uh, as much awareness of what you are as possible, this world will be a fabulous place for that. And I'm not trying to interfere with anybody who wants to do that. They're welcome to do that. There's no mean-spiritedness here. There's no attempt to thwart any of this at all. So everybody who wants to do it can relax. I'm not in opposition to that. I'm merely saying there's another option, which is a sidestep it. For those who don't want to forget what they are, who want to remember what they are, this world is a very lousy place for that. Terrible place for it. On the other hand, if one wants to, rem to forget what they are even more deeply, it's going to be an ideal place for that coming up. So we have two different purposes, two different directions, two different de destinations right now. Those who stay in the world will go through the uh, catastrophes. They will have a deep uh, sense of for forgetfulness of what they are, even deeper than before. And that will seem to open up a door, open up some space, as it were, for them to fantasize that they're prime creators. And this will lead to another cycle of existence. Literally, this, this event that's coming up on this planet is the leverage to perpetuate another cycle of existence because it, it brings about a severe shock uh, of forgetfulness. And that then, enable, like I said, opens up some kind of space where one can fantasize and, and believe, plausibly believe that one is prime creator, which then leads to another cycle of existence where one tries to uh, pretend, act, act out this pretense. 
but for those who don't want to go on another cycle of existence, it's absolutely crucial, very crucial to sidestep everything that's going to happen on this planet very soon, starting in 2012, maybe starting in about five weeks from now, maybe starting in the first week of uh, July. Probably could be a lot of trouble starting. Already starting to see the precursors of that with this crazy, grotesque, whole gruesome stuff that's happening in the world, just nonstop. Every day we read about something more, it's just absolutely off the charts. Those are precursors to what's going to happen here. And again, most people on this planet want to go through it, so fine. Let them go through it. Doesn't bother me. Of course, uh, I always hold out the option of, of not going through it if that's what someone wants. But if someone wants to go through it, that's their right. That's their choice. Doesn't harm reality in any way. Just a fantasy. They're, they're, they're continuing to go through a fantasy. Living, dwelling in a fantasy. That's what they want. They could continue on with that, and no, I have no problem with that, no judgment of it whatsoever. But I do have a problem with those who, who, those who do not want to go through with it being demanded that they do go through with it. I have a big problem with that. Okay, because that's very unfair. If those who want to sidestep it absolutely have the right to sidestep it. Nobody has any right to prevent that. No one. Just as no one has a right to prevent those who want to go through it. No one has that right either. Or all have free will. All have free will that has to be respected both ways. It has to be respected both ways. The, the basic teachings that were given out by Jesus is that is talking about this time. He said he's preparing us for, for the times that are to come. What he's really preparing us for was to sidestep this scenario that is coming up in the planet they call the end times end of the world all of that catastrophes we were given teachings that would help us sidestep it choose to sidestep it and then he said very clearly he's, he's going to going to prepare a place for us and then at the end he's going to come back and take those who want to sidestep the problems take them to that place very cut and dry black and white completely clear and there's no surprise to it whatsoever. Because this planet has literally is designed right now to go through a series of, of catastrophes, one after the other after they're just a vast train wreck. Okay, and there are entities uh, all over the cosmos who have come here and are, have incarnated on this planet. just for the purpose of going through all this, this train wreck because they see it as an enormous opportunity for them. That's why you have people here of very different types of people on this planet. Some very people that uh, have never been here before. Many have never been on this planet before. Never incarnated here before. And, and they, they have a hard time relating to, to those who, who are old timers here. And they're very eager. They're here for one purpose. It's like attending a rock concert. You know, they go to the rock concert, they're all excited about it. Very excited about what they see as a, as a supreme opportunity. Because why? They're supreme egotists. They see this as a supreme opportunity to uh, become prime creators by going through this train wreck, trying to erase all memory of what they really are, and then substituting their own uh, image an idea of what they what they are as, as prime creator. It's like wiping the the slate clean, wiping the slate clean, and then writing on it what they what they want to see on it, putting on it, projecting on it what they want us what they see themselves as being prime creators. Many, many, many. So that is literally the situation that we're in. very very simple the basics are in order to, in order to believe that we can be prime creator we have to forget what we are in order to forget what we are we have to uh, experience have to perceive tremendous amount of destruction and modification because that that brings about this forgetfulness of reality which 
which cannot be harmed in any way. When we look at all massive amount of harm, this tends to uh, bring about a state of deep forgetfulness in us. And once we're in a state of deep forgetfulness, we can then pretend, plausibly pretend, that, that we are prime creators or can become prime creators. Because we don't really have any, hardly any remembrance of what we really are and what reality really is. And in order to have that experience of, of tremendous destruction and modification to bring about this forgetfulness, we have to set a situation up ahead of time, just like a movie studio sets up a model of a city before the, you know, the, the, the city is raised or before it falls into the ocean. We have to, in order to have that, we have to set up a situation of a massive amount of people, massive amount of buildings, massive amount of infrastructure and, and stuff going on. Where can you do that? You do it on a planet. Just like working in the movie, people set up a model, they do it in a sound studio. They have studios set up for that purpose. This world is set up for that purpose. That's its purpose. Tremendous uh, efforts here have, have been made to uh, build up a, a vast, vast uh, situation so that it can be destroyed. And through that destruction, uh, those here who go through that destruction will will enter into a deeper state of forgetfulness of what they are, if that's possible. It's already we already have a very deep forgetfulness of what we are, but it is possible to to push it even deeper temporarily, and that's the catchword, isn't it? Temporarily, it's like a drug; it wears off eventually, but. By pushing a deeper level of forgetfulness of what we are, that enables us to then <clears throat> engage in another cycle of existence, of which is just a pretense that we're prime creator. Another cycle of pretending. And so those who do go through all this, they will, mo almost all I would imagine, uh, go through another cycle of existence. Now, for myself, I'm completely un uninterested in that. No desire to go through another cycle of existence. It's just be you know unutterably boring. Be not possible to do that. So don't want to forget uh, what I really am. Don't want to go through a massive amount of false evidence, evidence of, of modification and destruction, which you know would is is a denial basically of what we are. Severe denial. That's another way to put it. We, those who go through these catastrophes are really engaging in a form of severe denial of what they are. Just entering into this world and identifying with the body is a state of extreme denial of what we are. But to, to uh, engage in a colossal planetary sacrifice is, you know, is even greater uh, intensity of denial. And through this tremendously intense denial of what we are, which is spirit, which is invulnerable, we then can put up, continue to put up a pretense that we're prime creator for a while, temporarily. That's why it's a cycle that, that too ends. It wears off. The forgetfulness wears off. Because what you are cannot be touched, cannot be harmed, therefore it cannot be forgotten. It can be temporarily denied. It, we can enter into a state of forgetfulness, but it's a temporary state. So all those who go through this, these catastrophes, that deep denial, deep forgetfulness, that'll wear off over time. It'll wear off and will, lo will lose its uh, punch. But in the short term, it'll be a powerful punch. And that is why there's so many ego trippers from all over the galaxy, all, all over, who are here now. And they can't wait for all this to get going so that they can, you know, uh, take it all in. And by taking it all in, they can then engage in another cycle. They want to continue to pretend that they're prime creators. This is, is, it feels very attractive to them. That's what's called, you know, egotism, egotist. Remembering what we are is not egotistical. Remembering that we're perfect, that we're flawless, that we cannot be modified, that's not egotistical. What is egotistical is to try and change what we are. Try to make ourselves something that we're not. As if there's some power to do that. There is not any such power to do that. It can only uh, be imagined, be fantasized. So it, it's very easy to understand what's going on now. It's a great day. It's a great day. 
We don't have to project uh, into the future and, and imagine what's going to happen. We know what's going to happen here. If we try to put ourselves in the future here, we, we find instability, uh, confusion, anxiety, lots of dust, and instability, and, and we start getting all shaky and frightened and nervous. But I'm saying it's not necessary. For those who will sidestep it, it's not necessary to think, worry about the future here. Let the dead bury the dead. Let those who are interested in death, let them deal with it. Let them, let them, because it, that's their business. The goal should be to sidestep it, to prepare to sidestep it. To go somewhere else where uh, forgetfulness is not so strong. There are places where there is very little destructivity. Sometimes places of none. And... This then helps us remember, move towards remembrance of what we are. Ultimately, we have to choose a new idea and experience the, the effect of that idea, the, the, the idea of, that's not being modified at all. And that's the, the ultimate remedy. And we need to move in that direction. I'm not saying that everybody can do, will do that right now. It's difficult. There's a lot of reluctance to do it, a reluctance to do it. And uh, in the short time we have left, many will not, you know, will not do that. But that, that's okay. One only has to have the willingness to do it, to sidestep this catastrophes are coming up. I haven't done it yet. I haven't chosen a new idea. I'm not, a, I'm not abiding in the uh, non-modifiable effect. But I'm willing to do it. My willingness is, is greater than my unwillingness. So therefore, I'm willing to go to a place that, that will facilitate that. I'm willing to sidestep the disasters that will take place in this planet because I know that will only bring about severe denial of, of, what, I, of what I am. And, and uh, so it's the, only the willingness, just, a, just a, a little bit more willingness than unwillingness is all that is required. That's it. So in watching these videos, hopefully it will, it will clarify and help your willingness. And you say, yeah. Yeah, I, really, I don't want to go through another cycle of time and space and all this drama and, and the terrible stuff that existence constantly bringing out the feeling of alienation, loneliness and forgetfulness of what we are and struggles, competition in every possible way, striving constantly to to modify everything. And it's just, you know, some some who are still... Uh, interested in that, trying to be, become prime creators, they will, for them it's, it seems uh, like uh, a work well worth doing, but they don't yet recognize yet that it's futile. We'll never get them what they're looking for. And that's why eventually the futility of it begins to be felt. And then one starts saying, wow, I better change direction here. And for those who've already changed direction, I'm saying relocation is the answer. And maybe some will say, well, how in the world can that happen? That's not a problem. If someone is able to fashion a place for us, surely they're able to fashion a way to get there. So it's not even a concern that I have at all. Where there's a will, there's a way. And because this event is so vitally important, and, and why do you think Jesus came in the world? Why do you think many teachers came in the world? Precisely to prepare us for these times, to tell us what the options we are that we really have, and to tell us that we don't have to go through this. So surely they must have very well designed a way to enable us to sidestep this situation. I have faith in that. I absolutely have faith in that. And if, when the time comes, the way will be will be there as well. It's all, only important thing is to put two and two together, like I have done. And I, I'm able to therefore help help others, and just point out the actual fact of this situation that we're in. This world has been set up as a sacrificial offering to the ego. And all of that sacrifice is about to take place. And we don't have to go through that. Simple choice. Just say no. Not that no, we can stop it. We cannot stop it. Because that's, that's the purpose of this world. That's the purpose that's been given to it. We cannot try to stand in the way, like stand someone in Tiananmen Square standing in the way of a tank, thinking that we can stop it because 
there's the will, the collective will of so many on this planet. They want it. Very few don't want it, actually. The idea that a very few can stand in the way is ridiculous, especially if there's a way to sidestep it. Because we all have free will, and those who want it, they have a right to get it. They have a right to remain in fantasy. Nobody should, should oppose that and try to take away that right. They can be talked to and, and asked if they want to uh, sidestep it, but I have found that that in this world right now that people are very polarized. In other words, there are those who have decided to go through it and there are those who have decided to sidestep it. That's it. And those that have decided to go, go through with it are very committed to it. They're not on the fence. I'm not feeling very many people are on the fence anymore on, the, on this on this planet. One, one either has washed their hands of this uh, scenario here and decided, no, I'm, I'm going to relocate. Or one has decided to really get into it and try to make the most of it. And if one is on the fence, it will be a very unsatisfactory situation because it will feel like nothing, no benefit in any direction. Because those who are into it, they're, they're going to be pushing for another cycle of existence. And they'll be really, really into that, very much into it. This is like a vast catapult for them, a springboard. And they're going to try to spring off all this destruction into another cycle of existence of pretending that they're prime creators. So if one doesn't really want that, but at the same hand, one doesn't want to relocate, one will just be in a state of deep forgetfulness, but uh, without any anything, uh, any purpose to it. It would just be you know, a lousy, lousy, lousy condition. So if, if one doesn't really want to go through with it, then one really has to, at this point, make a decision, say, okay, let's lock in on relocation. Let's lock in on sidestepping this whole situation. Now, can it be sidestepped here in this world? I think temporarily, at first, let's, let's be very clear about this, that, that there, there is, most of the responses I've gotten uh, over the years is um, to move to some place on, on this planet that will be out of harm's way, which, you know, makes sense. Uh, initially, that might have some viability. But remember, this is really a chain reaction. This is a train wreck. So the first car wrecks, the second car wrecks, the third one wrecks. It goes on and on and on and on and on like that. So eventually, the viability uh, won't be there. But let me say that I believe initially it's very possible that there are some places where people will congregate who want to sidestep the situation. And as the events continue to unfold, perhaps a consensus will form in those places that, yeah, sidestepping it is the right thing to do. And so maybe there'll be a progressive sidestepping, that there will be a continuing, continual transiting off of this planet, taking place from those retreats around the world where people who will initially congregate. And uh, perhaps that will take place with me as well. Maybe I'll go to a very beautiful place, very serene, peaceful place on this planet that initially is not going to be caught up in, in the troubles so bad. And then from there, uh, the transiting to, to another place will take place. So that may be part of the plan. But it's also important to stress that the troubles, catastrophes that are coming on this planet uh, are not only... Uh, the ones that we see like the financial problems and, and wars and all these things but cosmic problems with the sun uh, as well as other cosmic problems which will eventually cause this planet to be burned with fire which means high, high energy particles where it will be kind of be microwave so ultimately this planet will not be a viable place for anyone so as far as so it's 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 a positive positive thing in other words we relocation to certain places on this planet i believe that's an it could be an initial step for many and then eventually as things continue there will be a sorting out there and a consensus you know
say, you know what, I, our feeling is that things are not going to get better and we need to sidestep it. Now myself, I've already seen everything that's going to happen in the future. I've literally shown the entire future up through the, the, the burning of the world with fire and melting down and a new planet and new people coming on here for the next cycle of existence. I have already seen all of that, experienced all of it. So uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, burdened by wondering what's going to happen. I already know. So I don't, you know, as far as going to a certain place in this planet, that's fine. No problem with that. But I'm clear about that, that this is an intermediate step. And that from those places, it might be possible for teachers to be there to uh, orient people towards actually sidestepping. So this is very feasible. There may be places on this planet where people congregate and then there are teachers there, our, our assistants, let's say, uh, who who know what's going to come, know that things are going to continue to get worse here, and ultimately this planet will be uninhabitable, who then help everyone with their spiritual clarity and point out, like in this video, point out the dynamics of existence, where existence is literally a vast imaginary scenario designed to induce deep forgetfulness of what we are because we want to pretend to be prime creators. And that this existence is always wearing thin. This forgetfulness is always wearing thin. We're always being attracted back to what we are. Therefore, if we want to continue with it, we always have to give ourselves another jolt of forgetfulness. Always. That's existence. It will always be that way. Very unsatisfactory. I mean, who wants to continue to go through with another jolt of destruction? You know, that's, that's, that's worn thin, isn't it? That's getting very old. Who really wants to do that? Ah, you know, now here we go again with all this stuff. Come on, give me a break. And so, actual facts of existence can be pointed out. The remedy can be pointed out, which ultimately is to choose a different idea, to give up the idea of wanting to be prime creator. Decide the idea of not wanting to be prime creator. Just choose that. And then one experiences the, the per perfect seamless peace, perfect oneness, perfect stillness, a fact that it's not being modified in any way, like a perfect reflection, and that brings about remembrance of what we are. So that's the ultimate goal. In the short term, my feedback that I've gotten from these videos is that people want to take an intermediate step, which is to congregate in, in uh, so-called safe locations, which again will be, will be a temporary thing. You know, it's called headed for the hills, head for the hills, so to speak. And their teachers, assistants, clarifiers, sidesteppers will come there, be there, and, and give these teachings. Hold satsang, basically, is what will happen. I might even do that. It's possible, probable, I would say. And uh, hold satsang in those places and help everyone attune to their true option so that when the catastrophes really heat up they can say ah you know what okay let's sidestep it and that'll be a great thing so don't give up hope just because you don't sidestep the, the, the beginnings of all this stuff doesn't mean you won't sidestep it later don't lose any nerve or hope or faith at all it just means maybe you're a little reluctant and you need a little bit of help so if you find yourselves being moved into other places, that's that's a good thing. That's a positive thing. You'll get the help there, no question. I mean, I'm attuned to it. There are many others that are attuned to this. And the help will be given. Satsang will be available. This is kind of a warm-up. All this is a warm-up for, for us. What will you do in those places? Attend Satsang. That's what you'll do. That's why I'm trying to make these videos along, because really... The satsang will be take up much much of your day, because you you need to really get clear about it quickly. It's not like five minutes a day, ten minutes a day. Try five hours a day, eight hours a day, like a job. It's really like a job. Let, let's be honest about it here, straightforward, direct. It, we get up in the morning, many of us, and we work. You know, eight 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 hours commute, couple you know an hour or so put in, you know, eight to ten hours a day on our jobs, doing something we may, may not even really enjoy that much. So satsang becomes our job in these 
relocate these areas, uh, safe areas, so to speak, retreat areas of the planet. Satsang becomes our job. We get up in the morning, we go to satsang. That's our work. And so you don't have somebody just doing a 10-minute meditation or something. You get accustomed to it. You get you get the full program. And it, it's simply a job. You have you have this, you know, your your time is structured in that way. It's not like you just have nothing to do wandering around in a daze. No. You're going to attend satsang. There may be numerous satsangs from different advisors who have slightly different perspectives on, on it. And, and that the complementary perspectives are very helpful. Because different people relate to different styles of, of advice. You know, that's very true. Based on, on their personality, based on their gender, based on their socioeconomical background, based on a lot of factors, different, the, different styles are appreciated. But the main thing is, you have to work at it, you have to attend, it's your job. When you go to these, those places, it's your job. But as you can see here, it's very simple. It's not, not a problem. It's not difficult. Explanations are not difficult. It's really one plus one equals two. We want to experience being prime creator. We have to forget, forget what we are. So we mind has produced this scenario of forgetfulness. And now we decided, you know what? We're tired of this. So what do we do? We need to drop the idea of trying to be prime creator. Take up the idea of, of wanting not to be prime creator. And we begin to experience remembrance of what we are. There you go, in a nutshell. And then everything else is just a, a clarification and an elaboration on, the, on these basics. And remember that the dream of destruction, dream of forgetfulness hasn't harmed what we are. Dream of modification has not modified what we are at all. But of course, if we want to be prime creator, we have to believe that it has. So it's only a fantasy of belief that we have that reality has been modified solely for the purpose of wanting to experience being prime creator. That's it. Hasn't been modified in the slightest bit. I've experienced reality. I can tell you that for 100% for sure. I saw no modification whatsoever. And we've been at this what, for billions of years. No modification. Not a shred of it. That's pretty, uh, in, in, pretty strong indictment, isn't it? Of the futility of existence. And not the slightest indication that any any harm could ever befall reality whatsoever. That's a complete, clear conviction. Unassailable. Reality is unassailable. Reality did not create itself uh, itself to be to harm itself to have any capacity to do that. And it doesn't have any capacity. So we only have dreams of modification, fantasies. That's it. And when we believe in a fantasy, of course, it seems very real to us. But we're only believing in this fantasy of modification to forget what we are so that then we can pretend to be prime creator. That is the, my key teaching. It's key teaching here. Once we see that, then the, the resistances, defenses, we, we're very willing to, to just put, throw them aside, realize that it's, just, that it's not even necessary, it's ridiculous, don't need them anymore. All this modification was, is not an end in itself at all. It's merely to, to bring about enough forgetfulness of what we are so we could then at least plausibly pretend to be prime creator. That's all that it is. 100%, that's all that it is. It's just a silly game, is all that it is. And that's the only way we can at least plausibly pretend to be prime creator, is to forget what we are. It's the only way. It's the only way. There's no way we can remember and know what we are and still pretend, plausibly pretend that we're, that we're prime creator. No way at all. We have to be in a state of deep forgetfulness of what we are in order to entertain this idea. Have to. It's the only way. And seeing that, then everything becomes very simple. We see, we realize that existence, all this has no purpose other than forget to induce this forgetfulness of what we are. It's all modification. As Buddha said, it's all impermanence. This, this existence is nothing but impermanence, which brings about this forgetfulness of what we are, because what we are is permanent. And here we are in a, in a vast cosmos of impermanence. 
And so that really brings about the forgetfulness that we are seeking. Again, not an end in itself. The means to an end, that's all. And if you're not interested in the end anymore, you don't need the means anymore. The means become flat, uninteresting, really. It's like when you get on an airplane to go somewhere, go on vacation, you go to Hawaii, you get off the airplane and you're immersed in Hawaii. You're not obsessed about the airplane. You're not thinking about the airplane anymore. What the seats were like, what the service was like, what the air was like, what the sound was like, who, who, who was on the plane with you, all these things. You forget all about them entirely. Really, think about that. So, again, when you, when you realize you don't want to be prime try to be prime creator you don't want to keep that pretense up then the means of forgetfulness are pff, what interest does one have in that anymore none it's not interest interesting you're not trying to get rid of it or anything it's not no longer interested in any way the whole cosmic dance of deception has no more interest doesn't matter how colorful it is it's just it's still not interesting because you've chosen a different purpose, different end, and these means do not serve that end anymore. They can remain and just over and just overlay it. The feeling of non-modification non just overlays it all. Doesn't try to get rid of it, but one is not interested in it anymore. It's like an old suit of clothes that's too small for you. I mean, do we still look at the clothes we wore as a child and we're interested in those? now? they don't fit anymore. So all this modification, this dream of modification, it's not an end in itself. It doesn't have any purpose itself. It doesn't contain the purpose. We as spirit contain the purpose. We're the ones who chose to try and be prime creator then mind has to present this idea to us. So we're the ones responsible. We're the ones who has to choose a new idea. And all of this dream we had is really nothing at all except a, a way to forget what we are. And once we decide we don't want to forget what we are, it doesn't have any more relevance or purpose for us. And like any dream, the dream just gradually vanishes. It's no longer be, when we wake up, the dream vanishes, right? Nothing happens to it. It's not destroyed. It just is, is no longer presented. Softly, just subsides, it fades away, so to speak. But these are things that we can be taught in the satsangs. To recapitulate this particular video, then we eventually we arrived at the the advice that. Relocating to certain places in this world is a, t is, is a viable temporary measure, I would say. It's not a permanent solution. In those centers, there will be satsang. Very powerful satsang by very, very able and capable uh, clarifiers. And your job in those, those retreats will be to go to attend satsang. That's your job. The whole retreat area will be built around that. And by attending those satsangs, one will then get enough clarity so that one will, one will then sidestep the, the worst catastrophes to come. Initial, the initial catastrophes will probably be financial and maybe wars. Those are minor compared to the ones that are coming later, which are cosmic. It's a really a, a pulling apart of this planet, a, a restructuring, a redesign of this entire planet for another cycle of existence for those who want to continue to pretend to be prime creators. That's it. All right, so we're really in a good place right now. Really, really good place. Tremendous place, and just in time. I, I end the videos the last couple of five, 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 because I'm saying that the, the five months, five weeks, what does that leave us? Leaves us July 5th, on the fifth day of July. You might say five, five, five. I believe that's a, that's a significant date and that people may begin to relocate uh, at that time, some into the spiritual retreat centers, 
others perhaps uh, will go other places the problems financial problems may occur there may be a war starting at that time the things will, are going to heat up at that time and we need to be prepared to at that time I believe make some changes so get everything lined up in your life and realize that this is all coming it's all coming down it really is because the, w the will of the world of those here in this world they want it to take place they want this catastrophe these problems to take place because it gives them a tremendous ego boost lets them believe even stronger that they that they could be prime creators that they're prime creator that's what they're looking for and that's, that's this is the means to attain that that high like a drug high and, and they call it all sorts of names, expansion of consciousness, whatever, shift in consciousness, all these things. But it's really just a, a temporary ego boost to believe that they're, they're prime creators. And it's a very, you know, intoxicating type of ego boost, very strong as far as, uh, uh, it, you know, it has to be in order to go through all this junk to get there. You know, there must, there must be something very powerful that is uh, dragging them through this. But, but once again, it's temporary. It wears off. It's a delusion. Because the remembrance of what we are inevitably reasserts itself. And then what do you do? Then you're stuck in this another cycle of existence and you start screaming, Oh my gosh, I want out of this. I want out of this. What do I do? What do I do? And you have to wear away all these the shocks of, of these of, of destruction and catastrophe and modification that has to gradually dismiss all of that and see that it was it just an, it wasn't the end in itself. You just did that on purpose to so you could forget what you are more deeply. That's all. Take responsibility for it. Say, yeah, I, I did it. I set it up. I wanted to go through it just like a movie producer sets up the set, sets up the models. And then destroys the models, films the destruction, produces the, the movie, edit, edits it, produces it, distributes it, and then sells tickets to it. We're doing all of that. We just have to admit it. To say, yeah, because why? I wanted to try and, and experience being prime creator. Very simple. Just simple acknowledgement is the greatest medicine there is. And remember, none of this has affected reality in the slightest bit. So there's no angry God there's no destruction of our true creations of our home whatsoever we haven't despoiled our home at all so where's the harm there's no harm we haven't done anything so we don't even have to forgive anything we just need to remember that this is so we just need to clarify once you clarify you realize there's nothing to forgive I was just on an ego trip you can say I was just on this this crazy ego trip and now I'm you know I'm, I'm over that <laughs> it's that simple. Okay, I actually have to go to work today, believe it or not. Dealing with the junk of existence. Trying to still pay some bills, but in, in the near future, things are going to change drastically. And we can see the, uh, the problems now are starting to, to become pretty evident. So have a great day. And I will continue to lay out these clarifications and get you ready for your, where you're going to retreat to. So you're ready when you go there, you know, you're ready for satsang. You're ready for clarification. Satsang means clarification of truth. You're ready for it. You say, yeah, I, I had these videos and uh, I'm actually feeling up to speed. I can do it. I can do it. That's the whole point of this. I wish there were more views, of course, but what can I do? What can I do? I just do the best I can and uh, get ready for these times because uh, the opportunity for us is, is enormous to literally sidestep the problems and not go through another cycle of existence. It's, that's, that's major. That's big time. All right. Have a great day. And that's it.